Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Jennifer Rodriguez, and I will be your presenter today. All right, so let's go ahead and, uh, and get started. So if you've been with us throughout the whole entire week, you will know that today is day four of America Saves Week. And what we are doing today is we are covering paying down debt as a method of saving as well. So um, to tell you a little bit about us, if you've not joined us in our previous workshops, um, credit.org is a nonprofit agency. We have been around since 1974. We are a credit counseling agency, and then we are also a HUD approved um, housing counseling agency, agency as well. So we do have um, a variety of services and programs um, available for the general public. Our mission is simple yet vital to improve the financial well-being of uh, uh, individuals and families by providing quality financial education and counseling. So I just want to share a little bit about what services we have. And like I said, we do have services related to credit and also housing. So for our credit services, we do have um, credit counseling. We also have credit report review. And those two are pretty much for individuals that are maybe looking to understand their finances a little bit better and maybe know a little bit more about their credit reports and how to improve their credit. Um, also for individuals that do have debt, we'd have debt um, counseling and debt management programs. And for those folks that are going through bankruptcy, um, they do have courses um, that they must um, take per the Department of Justice, and that would be for uh, the pre and the post bankruptcy um, courses. And we do provide those as well. And we also provide um, student loan counseling. And along with the counseling services, we do have um, financial education as well. For the housing services, we have home buyer assistance, for foreclosure prevention, pre-purchase counseling, reverse mortgage counseling, and rental counseling. Again, all of these are services related to housing. And along with that, we also have the educational component, which helps individuals learn a little bit more about the home buying process, especially if they're the first, first time home buyers. We do have an eight hour course where you, at the end of the course, would receive a certificate and you could use that certificate um, to apply for any um, uh, home purchasing um, programs that could help you get into your home um, a little bit um, easier, whether it be down payment assistance or uh, assistance with closing costs and things, things of that sort. So again, welcome to day four of America Saves Week. Again, we are going to be talking about saving as we have been all week, but today we're going to talk about how to save while reducing um, your, your debt, right? Or how to save by reducing debt, because that's also um, a way to save money when you're not paying interest and you're not paying into fees. And we're going to cover all that in a little bit. I do also want to mention that I'm going to be talking about self-managed um, debt repayment plans that you can do, creditor uh, uh, plans that um, would be some you know particular program or workout option for you as well. And then also, um, you know, what is what would be a part of working with a counselor. So what would that entail, right? And we'll cover that as well. So um, a lot to cover today. And I think knowledge obviously is gonna be the best thing, right? To know more about what debt is, what credit is, and what fees come along with those, um, those tools, right? That we have um, to use. Now, when it comes to credit, we always say, you know, make sure that you're happy with the terms and conditions before you apply. And sometimes, you know, there's a lot of very, very small print that we maybe don't take the time to look into. But it is very important that we do understand that before we apply or before we actually have access to these types of, of lines of credit, because the language is there for a reason, right? Um, and that language comes with numbers. And so those numbers sometimes, you know, will be a consequence of something we do or we don't do. And this is why it's important that we fully understand, um, you know, what the, the terms and conditions are to these types of accounts. So first of all, you know, there could be something where you could maybe apply for something that has an annual fee. It's going to be important for you to know that because sometimes those types of fees, if you don't expect them, they could definitely catch you off guard. Um, also, you have to know the APRs on the purchases, APRs on transactions, um, APRs on access to cash, maybe. So there, there may be different types of APRs for one particular, um, you know, credit product. So you have to be aware of those as well. Um, if there are any types of balance transfer offers, some of those may also come with fees. Um, so I talked about the cash advance fee as well. 
Now, when it comes to the default um, purchase rate, you may you know, have a credit, a line of credit with a particular interest rate. But if you do fall behind um, you know, several times you know, or very frequently, they may put you at a default rate, which is you know, very, very high. Um, also, you have to know what the finance charge is, what your grace period is. It's generally anywhere from 20 to 30 days. I'm sorry, 25 to 30 days. Um, and I'm going to go into that in a little bit. Some um, cards may also offer insurance or protection. So, you know, what was to happen if you were to lose your employment or maybe you get hurt and now you have a reduction of income and you can't make your credit card payments? What are these protections? What are these insurance uh, insurances? Um, and are there fees for those? All right. Um, also, late payments. If you are not making your payments on time, then, of course, you know, this is something you're going to see on your bill. Um, immediately the day after, right? Um, over the limit fees, uh, sometimes there will also be reward program fees, so you have to look out for those. Um, transactions, it could be a transaction, um, you know, by you using this credit card or line of credit in another country, right? There, there, there could be an added fee there. Um, also, some of these uh, credits or line of credits um, may also have promotional conditions. So, for example, it will say, hey, you've got a promotion for 0% APR for the next three months. Be very careful and read into all of that because it'll let you know if you do not pay within those three months, then you know you will either have a fee or you're going to um, incur interest or there's going to be something to it. So you really have to kind of look into anything, especially if there is some type of introductory rate or some type of, of promotion um, going on. So once you know the terms and conditions of all of your lines of credit, knowing how much debt you could actually handle is going to be another thing you want to know about, right? So when it comes to you, you know, having all of your money, your income, your expenses, and all of your debts, and you're paying everything off, and you feel like you're managing, uh, sometimes you could maybe be overworking your budget because you are maybe making paying more towards debt than you really um, should. Maybe you're thinning yourself out a little bit, right? which could be a little dangerous if it comes to you having an emergency or you may be being able to set more money aside for savings or you know just kind of balancing things out. So one of the things you may want to do is look at exactly how much debt you have and checking to see how much of your net income for, goes towards that debt, all right? So experts say to keep your monthly consumer debt payments down to around anywhere from 10 to 15% of your total monthly net income right? The absolute max, max amount would be 20%. Now, of course, it really does depend on the type of household you have. So for example, if you're a single individual, then 20% is probably, you know, the max you should have. Um, if you and your spouse are, are both working, right, then 20% again would be the max. Um, if you do have children, right, you want to make sure you're a little bit more conservative and maybe pull it back to 15%. And if you're retired or on fixed income, then you really want to be conservative and pull it down to 10%, no more than 10%. So this is a really great approach to kind of understanding or getting a, 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 a well-rounded idea of how much debt you could actually manage. Um, and, you know, if you feel like you're maybe above these percentages, I think this is going to be a really good tool for you to figure out, you know, what you need to do to bring that percentage um, down to help you meet your financial goals. So what if we're in a position where we're a little overwhelmed with our finances and we're at a point where we're probably ignoring our bills, right? Well, let's talk about the, the things that can happen um, if, if that is the case, right? So if you are not paying your bills, then you are obviously paying late fees, right? Anytime you do not pay your bills on time, you will definitely be incurring late fees. Um, and these happen, you know, monthly if you are not paying month after month. Another thing too, is that the creditors will then report you to the credit bureaus, which means that that is going to have a negative impact on your credit report as well. If you are carrying any balances over month after month, then you'll know that you are going to be getting finance charges for those amounts that are uh, being carried over. Uh, again, if you have uh, delinquencies, and these are frequent delinquencies, right? Um, and again, that goes back to the terms and conditions that we were talking about. Sometimes the lenders will, you know, maybe have a, a, a bit of patience where they say, okay, no more than two times, no more than three, three times 
It's up to the lender's discretion or the creditor's discretion. But if you are frequently falling behind and not making your payments on time, they can definitely put you to a default interest rate on that or APR on that line of credit um, that could go up to 33%, let's say. Uh, and that would be on all you know, transactions moving forward. So you really want to avoid to ever even get um, to that point. Also, if your balances exceed your credit limit. So this is if you've not opted out um, where you just slide your card and it allows you then to go over your credit limit. Once that happens, there is a fee that kicks in. You know, sometimes it could be about $29 or more. And this will be each month that you are over on your credit limit. So again, these are just a couple of things that I'm mentioning. If you, you know, don't make your, 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 your payments on your credit cards, if you ignore your bills, and, you know, even though it might seem like little things here and there, these, all of these things definitely do add up. And in a way, yes, it definitely impacts um, your budget, right? So I think a couple of things you could maybe do is do a self-assessment and ask yourself a few questions. You know, is this the right purchase to do? Am I ready to make this purchase? You know, and, and, and does it justify, you know, the fact that you can or cannot pay this debt off or pay this purchase off. So a couple of questions that you can ask yourself, you know, if you really have to sit there and kind of think about whether or not you should make this purchase on a line of credit. So before you scan, swipe, key, or click, all right, ask yourself this question. Can I pay the entire purchase off in full when I get home? All right. And that could be you doing a transfer, you know, uh, making your payment online, doing it over the phone, mailing your payment in. As soon as you get home, can you do that, right? If the answer is no, then go ahead and ask yourself question number two, which is, can I pay the entire purchase off in full before the grace period, okay? So before um, the, billing, the billing cycle ends, which is, again, 20 to 30 days um, from the billing date, if the answer is no, then the probable answer there for you to kind of, you know, think about things is oh, you maybe you're not ready to swipe the card. And I'm not saying you don't use credit for anything. Sometimes you do have to use credit for very large purchases where you are already anticipating having a balance, you know, for a few months. But if it's going to be a small purchase that you should realistically be able to handle month after month, uh, you know, maybe it's not um, the right thing to do when it comes to, you know, just having it sit there and, and create more debt on a, on a line of credit. So everything begins with the budget. And we always, I think all in the whole entire week, we've been talking about um, creating a budget because it's just the core of everything. And it's just so important, right? So the budget is definitely the first place where you want to start. Um, it's also known as a spending plan, right? And this is basically going to be the one tool that is going to help you understand your income um, and where your expenses are going, where your money is 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 going. Um, and if you get really, really good at it, you could figure this out even before you get your income, which is really great, right? So this approach is going to help you manage everything, and especially if your goal is to save money by paying off your debt, then this will help you um, align your goals um, so you can actually um, you know, have a successful outcome. So again, what does what does a budget look like? The budget could look like you know pretty much anything, whatever makes you feel comfortable, whatever um, you can do to track your your income, and your expenses. It could be you know the sheet that we have on the screen here, which is one of the sheets, uh, the budgeting sheets that we have in our booklet, um, Power of Paycheck Planning. You'll find it on our website, credit.org. So this is one of the sheets that you could use for that. Um, you could maybe just want to do it manually, right? Where you could just pull up a notebook and you could just start, you know, tracking everything there. Um, maybe you want to use an app on your phone, whichever way you want to do it and whatever makes you uh, stick to budgeting or to, to your um, financial planning, um, do that. That's going to be the best approach and whatever makes you uh, a little bit more comfortable. We of course do have tools that could kind of help you get started and you can go ahead and change things around as you see fit. Right. But again, this is going to be a way where you, you're going to be able to track your income, track your expenses. And then at the same time, you're going to be able to visualize what your goals are and then determine whether it's a short term, a midterm or a long term goal. So by knowing those things, and especially if one of your goals is paying off debt, then you'll be able to know, OK, I'm going to set this much aside to be able to meet my financial goal, which in this case would be paying off certain debt. OK, so again. 
how do we do the whole, you know, paying out, uh, paying off the debt? Well, like we said, to knock out the debt, the first thing you want to do is know about your money. So this is why financial planning and, you know, having a budget is so important. And that's going to be always step one, right? So once you actually complete your budget, you're going to go back and look at your monthly spending. You could rearrange expenses. You could reduce certain expenses. You could increase your income to be able to meet your goals. Um, but again, you're going to have to have that um, that first um, uh, base of, of everything, that, that infrastructure, right? Um, check to see if you could make adjustments in your budget where you could actually set aside maybe $50, maybe $500 um, to apply that towards your goal. Your goal could be, you know, again, saving just in general um, or just paying off uh, a particular debt. But you're not going to know that until you have your budget and you can actually move the numbers around and see, you know, where you can reduce on certain expenses to be able then to meet your um, your priorities, which in this case would be paying off debt, right? Now, if you're thinking, oh my gosh, you know, I really want to pay off my debt, but I don't feel comfortable doing that because I don't have emergency savings right now. So I don't know what to do. Um, well, one of the things that you do want to do is again, visit your budget, see how much money you could pull aside, right? And let's say you have a hundred extra dollars at the end of the month, right? What you can do is, um, let's say you have a minimum credit card payment of $35. So what you could do is you could add the $35 minimum payment. And then from that $100 that you have extra at the end of the month, $50 of that could be added onto that payment, right? And then the other $50 you could put in savings. So you can do a, 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 a an approach where you divide that money in half, half goes towards your debt and then half goes towards your saving, which means that you could then at the same time um, do both things, right? Pay off your debt and increase or build your savings. So again, when it comes to the, to the uh, monthly, oops, to the repayment plan strategies, Excuse me. So the repayment plan strategy. So now that you know what your budget looks like, now that you know um, exactly, you know, what you can do in regards to extra income to pay off your debt. Now you're going to see what is going to be the strategy. How am I going to apply that extra money that I have at the end of the month to be able to eliminate my debts? Right. Well, you do have three different strategies that you can use. And the first strategy this is a strategy where you actually can see the progress happening um, a lot quicker. Not so much that it is a lot quicker, but you can see it a lot quicker simply because what you do is you focus on sending the majority of your payment to the smallest debt and doing that month after month until that debt is completely paid off, right? So for example, in here we have five creditors, okay? Um, you start sending all of your monies, your extra monies to the smallest debt, you pay that off, so now you have for creditors, right? You roll that money that you were sending to creditor number five over to creditor number four and continue to do the same strategy until you're done paying creditor number four. And now you have three creditors. So this is really nice because um, it, it really helps, um, I think, mentally and with your, um, I don't know, it just, it, it, it gives you a lot of um, pride and um, confidence that you could actually tackle your debt because you can actually see um, you know, the balances go to zero and then you're just up paying that off. So I think this is a really great, a great way to start. This is also called the snowball effect or the snowball um, method, um, because you're basically snowballing that payment into the next creditor, then the next one and the next one until you're completely done paying off your debt. Strategy number two. Okay, this one's a little bit different because this one, let's say your focus is to improve your credit score. So let's say you're thinking about making a, a large purchase and you really want to work on your credit. Um, but the thing is, is that you're very, you know, with the cards you have, you're very close to your limits and maybe that's what's impacting your credit right now. So what you want to do with this strategy is focus the majority of your payment to the credit card that is closest to the um, to the limit. All right. So you focus on that and you bring that down. One of the recommendations we always say is, you know, you want to make sure that you keep your debts at least 30 percent. Um, you know, when we're talking about the line of credit, at least, you know, below 30 percent. You don't want to use more than that. So if you can go ahead and focus your payments to the credit card that's nearest to the uh, line of credit and bring that down to at least the 30, the 30 percent, that is definitely going to help um, your credit score uh, quite a bit. Now, 
Uh, strategy number three, this is when you are thinking, oh my gosh, I have all of these um, lines of credit, all of these debts, and I keep sending payments in and it just doesn't seem to make an impact. Um, that could be because maybe you have a couple of credit cards with very, very high interest rates. And so it almost feels like you're only paying the interest on it. So in this case, what you want to do is you want to focus your payment on the credit card that has the highest interest rate, right? And you want to bring that down because you want to see that impact, right? You want to make that impact and you want to save money by not paying so much interest on that particular debt. All right. So these are three very, very useful strategies. And it doesn't necessarily mean that once you start one, you have to kind of, you know, finish um, with with that one strategy. You can switch them up um, during your the process, you know, of you paying off your debt. So you can start off by, you know, getting to the ones with the higher interest and then from there going to the ones that maybe have the highest balance. And then after that, once you, you know, bring everything a little bit um, to where it's something more manageable, you can then start with the credit card that maybe has the lowest balance and then do strategy number one. So you could mix and match. You could use all of these strategies, but definitely do what motivates you and what helps you um, the best. Um, but again, you can definitely, these are strategies that you could apply on your own and you could do um, for yourself, right? Now, let's say that you've already done all of these strategies. You've tried different things. And you still feel like you're a little overwhelmed when it comes to your debt. So what can you do now, right? So um, doing a self-managed plan um, is, is something um, you've maybe already tried or haven't tried. Uh, and this is kind of what I was talking up, talking about when we're um, discussing the um, the different types of strategies, right? So maybe you've already done that. Um, another thing you can do is then talk to a credit counseling um, agency to see if they can actually help you. Um, with your with your finances, right? They will have options for you. And I'm going to get into that in a little bit as well. Um, when you're looking at your budget, even though you feel maybe a little overwhelmed, you always want to try to save at least 10% of your income, you know, for emergencies or any, uh, any um, financial goal that you might have. However, um, you know, when it comes to um, cutting back or reducing expenses, see if you could reduce um, expenses first, um, versus cutting down or cutting back on your savings at 10%, all right? Um, Reevaluate your budget periodically. Sometimes you might have changes in your life where, you know, you have a new family member and you have a baby in the house or you have, um, you know, a reduction of income or maybe supplemental income. So now you have, you know, a second job that's going to help with income. Anytime, um, you know, anything in the household changes, make sure that you, your budget actually reflects what is currently happening in, in your household. So don't be afraid to reevaluate. You're not going to get it right the first time. And again, just like things happen, you know, month after month, they might change a little bit. Just make sure that, you know, you work on the budget and the budget actually complements um, what is currently um, happening in your life, right? So a couple of things that you might want to look at as well is if you've already done what you feel like you can, and you're thinking, you know what, maybe I have to look at other options, maybe increasing income, maybe reducing, um, you know, a couple of expenses. I think those two things combined can actually be really good things. And they don't have to be major changes, um, but, you know, any small change could definitely help in a situation where you just need a little, you know, a little start to kind of get on top of your debt um, to pay that, to pay that down, right? So for you to have, um, you know, control of your money and control of everything, you would have to plan this out. So how, how would you like to do that? You know, one of the things you can do is maybe take um, a part-time job, a second job, maybe pick up a couple of hours at work. Or if you do have a hobby and you're really good at it, I mean, you could even make the money off of that too, right? Um, other things you can do is if you maybe have um, people either living in your household or if you could rent out a room, get some extra income that way. Um, you know, reduce if you're eating out a lot or maybe, um, you know, uh, having Uber Eats or, you know, anyone bringing food to you and that gets a little pricey too, um, consider maybe cooking for yourself, right? So that's another option. So there are a couple of th different things you can do using coupons and, you know, discount apps and things of that sort that will help you reduce your expenses. So anything you can do to either increase your income or reduce expenses will definitely help you get to your goal of paying off or reducing your debt. Now, there are benefits to talking to um, a, a credit counseling, um, uh, a credit counselor, sorry. And this is because they'll be able to um, have a different point of view 
right? Um, when it comes to your finances. And I think this is really nice when you have someone else, especially if it's, you know, a professional looking at your finances and being able to, you know, gather information to build a budget. If you already have your budget and you're doing well, I think it's very, um, it's very nice to get validation um, from a professional to say, you know what, you're doing well with your budget. Let's go ahead and see, you know, what else we can do and find, find other options where they can actually give you recommendations of other things that you um, you can do, whether it be, you know, providing resources or education um, or, you know, anything that will benefit you with your current financial situation, you will get this from a professional. Um, again, when it comes to the budget, if they see anything that you can maybe um, do to improve your budget, they will also give you um, those recommendations. Now, um, when it comes to um, doing a credit counseling session, right, and speaking to a credit counselor, one of the things that they may also recommend would be a debt management plan. Just to kind of give you the basics of it, um, a, a debt management plan is basically a partnership between you, your creditors, and the nonprofit credit counseling agency. And basically, when you are speaking with your credit counselor, if they see that you are in a position where you could financially get yourself out of debt within three to five years, they will then make the recommendation, it's a recommendation only, that um, a debt management plan may be an option for you, right? Now, once they actually um, let you know exactly what your plan, what the plan looks like, this is something that's gonna be completely voluntary. So it's up to you if you would like to then move on with the debt management plan. And the types of debts that will fall into a debt management plan are generally unsecured debt. And that would be, for example, credit card debt, medical bills, and some collections um, may apply to. Again, that really just depends on, you know, whether these are qualifying debts. But if you are interested to know more, um, our agency credit.org does have credit counseling available where debt management plans are also um, an option. So again, if if um, if your uh, financial situation um, is suitable for it, and um, you could definitely talk to a counselor and see if this is an option for you. So again, going back to what we um, first started talking about, America Saves Week. This is exactly what we're talking about today, right? How, how are you able to save money by paying off your debt? Well, again, we don't have you know all the fees that are um, that come with 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 having lines of credit and and um, certain conditions on certain transactions and things of that sort. You're also not paying so much in interest, right? When it comes to, you know, paying off debt and not carrying balances over, making sure that your budget um, is, you know, um, is, is doing what it's supposed to do where you don't fall behind on your debt and now you don't have late payments. So again, this is very important, but a lot of the times it's very difficult for us to understand exactly how to do these things because we don't write them down. You know, we maybe don't take ourselves very seriously. And I think by us making a pledge to ourselves and letting us know that we are very serious about our financial future and that we really do want to pay ourselves, you know, our debt off and, and maybe increase our savings in the future. I think making that pledge for yourself, making yourself um, that promise that you really want to put yourself in a better situation, a better financial future would definitely start today by making a pledge, right? So um, uh, our agency credit.org, um, is managing our Inland Empire campaign for America Saves. And if you would like to take a pledge, you can go to the www.inlandempiresaves.org website where you can make a pledge for yourself. And when you pledge, not only are you making, again, that promise, you know, to pay off your debt, to save for a down payment for a new house, um, to, you know, save money for retirement or sending off your kids off to college, whatever it is, maybe it could be a vacation, right? Um, I think making yourself that promise is important, but also receiving, um, you know, financial information uh, that helps you be able to get to your financial goal is definitely important and it's, 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 it's key, right? So um, while you are, you know, making this pledge, you are also receiving a lot of educational material. Um, you also sometimes will even get reminders of, you know, um, you know, being on top of your goal. So I think it's very important that we really do take ourselves, you know, serious and make that pledge and promise to ourselves. So I do want to share a couple of resources here. Um, Credit.org, again, is our agency. We do have a lot of free educational material on our website. We do have educational tools as well and resources. You could also follow us on Facebook. Uh, on Facebook, YouTube, um, Twitter, which is now X, 
And then um, we also have our blog. And then again, please um, consider taking the pledge for yourself at inlandempirestates.org. And we are also going to have a really great um, guest speaker for our next workshop tomorrow, um, which is from the U.S. Department of Labor. And so they also have really great um, sheets and um, tools for budgeting. So that's their link there. And if you want to join us for our last workshop tomorrow, we're going to be talking about saving at any age. And again, we are going to have a very special guest speaker. So I do recommend that you join us tomorrow. And I look forward to seeing you then. Uh, if you do have any questions and you would like to reach out to me, my information is on the screen. And other than that, I do want to thank you so much for joining us. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you.